So we're going to graph this function. f of x equals 5x to the 2 thirds minus 2x to the 5 thirds. If you can see that, it's a 5 thirds here. And when we graph the function, like on the worksheet, there was a whole bunch of things. So I typically will want you to check all of those things. And um, so what I've done is I've listed them here. So by figuring out all this information is what you need to do. And then once you've figured it out, you're going to draw the graph, right? So the issue is, though, that we want to make sure that all the information is not only on the graph, but also that it's somewhere where we can see it, right? So I, that's why I like to sort of stick it on the side all together in one place rather than having all, like, all these calculations everywhere and then you can't figure out where anything is. So it's always a good idea to just kind of list it in an easy way to look at it. And this is, I, I abbreviated, but intervals of increase and decrease. So first thing, domain. Well, there's no problem with this function, right? This function is defined everywhere because it's like two thirds and five thirds. So I've got a cube I don't have to worry about negative numbers or anything. So my domain is going to be all of them. Okay, or you can definitely give the domain in interval notation. Okay, intercepts and asymptotes. Okay, so first of all, sometimes it's more difficult to solve for the, uh, the intercepts. You can always, of course, plug in x equals 0 to find the y-intercept, right? So obviously, if I plug in x equals 0, I'm going to get y equals 0, too. So that's one point on my graph. But also, notice if I look at this, I can actually uh, pull out a 2 thirds from each piece. So 2 thirds, and then that will give me 5 minus 2x, right? Because 5 thirds minus 2 thirds is 3 thirds. So I can also see that at x equals uh, 5 halves, I'm going to get y equals 0. So I do have those. And there are no asymptotes. Um, right? This is just, I can talk about the long time behavior if I want. But it's just going to, there are no asymptotes. Um, let's see, next. Intervals of increase and decrease. So now I need to start taking derivatives. Okay. So my first derivative is going to be 5. I'm just going to go back to this because it's a little bit easier. x to the negative 1 third minus 2 times 5 thirds x to the 2 thirds. Okay. Uh, so we have 10 thirds x to the minus one third minus x to the two thirds. So let's make, so this would be like one over x to the one third. So let us make this a nice fraction here, x to the one third, and then it's going to be one minus x in the top, right? Because I'm multiplying top and bottom here by one third, x to the one third. Right, so top and bottom here to make by x to the one third to make a common denominator of one third. Okay, so now what's interesting here, by the way, is you can see that the function is defined at zero. It goes through zero, zero real quick. But you can see the derivative is not defined at zero. You're going to have this issue here. You see it's at the bottom. So um, the derivative is undefined. At x equals 0, right? So x equals 0 is a critical point of a derivative. And it's also, and it's equal to 0 at x equal 1, clearly. So um, f primed of x equals 0 when 1 minus x equals 0 or x equals 1. Okay? So I have two critical points to do my sign chart. So here's my sign chart. I've got 0, 1, and I'm looking at the sign of the first derivative. Okay, what, what's going on here? So if I'm over here negative, like if I put in negative 1 here, 
Okay, the top is going to be positive, but the bottom is going to be negative. So these are all negative here. Now, if I'm between 0 and 1, so let me put in, say, a half, right? If I evaluate this at a half, I'll see it's positive in the top and it's positive in the bottom. So this is positive. And then over 1, I got a 2 here. Okay, it's going to be negative because the top is going to be negative and the bottom is going to be positive. So I'm going my sign chart here. Now for the first derivative, so I can answer this question. The function is increasing from 0 to 1, and it's decreasing. Of course, unfortunately, like this is now in my way. I want to keep that information, so I'm going to throw it up here. Right? Out prime of x, 0, 1. And it's increasing, decreasing, decreasing, right? Decreasing from, um, you know what? Let's do this. Grab this. Well, that's fine. I'll just erase that out here. So, negative for x, yeah, I did it this way. So, negative um, the 0 and 1 infinite. Okay. So now what about our maxes and our mins? Okay? You can kind of notice, first of all, this something's gonna happen when I'm going from negative to positive and positive to negative, but this isn't gonna happen like this. This is not, this is a nice zero, right? Because this is zero here. So this is going to be, it looks like a little man, but it's just supposed to be, that's going to be my maximum, but this is not defined here. So in fact, this is going to be like that, okay? It's going to be going down to a point. So it's still a minimum. It's still a local minimum. And we know it's at zero, zero, because we already found that. But it's not going to be a nice round pretty one like this because the derivative isn't defined there. So it's going to be a point or a cusp, right? Now, so my local min is at zero, zero, and my local max, so in order to figure that out, right, I'm going to take my x equals one, and I'm going to plug it back into my function, f of one, 5 minus 2, okay, so it's 3. So the local max is 3. So I have that information. Now the, for 5 and 6, I'm going to look at the concavity, so I need to take the second derivative. All right, so let's take the second derivative. Um, I can just leave this here, first derivative. And then this stuff, second derivative. And we'll just pull this 10 thirds out here. Because this is, whoops, minus x to the 2 thirds, my second derivative. Um, I've got minus 1 third x to the minus 4 thirds, minus 2 thirds x to the minus 1 third. All right. Okay. So I can have my ninths and half here. Oh, yes. Okay, I'm just double checking all my signs. Okay, so what I have then is I've got minus one over x to the four thirds, minus two over x to the one third. So if I make my common denominator is now gonna be x to the four thirds, right? So x to the four thirds down here, and in order to be x to the 4 thirds, I'm going to have to multiply by 1, x, x. So I'm going to have minus 1, minus 2, x up here. Okay. So when it comes to concavity, where can the concavity change? It can, again, we have this issue of x equals 0 being a place where the concavity can change. And then also, I have where the top of this thing is. So I get minus 1, minus 2x equals zero, right? So I have uh, minus uh, 2x equals minus one, right? And then this would be x equals negative one half. Did I do that right? 
since you're feeling like there's some error here with the signs. 2x, yes. Okay, so x equals negative 1 half. So let's check that out though. So now we're going to make a sign chart for the second derivative. I'm going to raise this first derivative right now. So my sign chart for my second derivative, I've got negative 1 half and 0. Okay, and then when I look at this, if I put in like a positive thing, positive 1, then this will be negative on top, positive on the bottom. So, okay, but the bottom is actually always going to be positive, right? Because it's something to the fourth. So, it's just we're going to be looking at the top here. So, this is going to be plus, right? And over here, if I put in, say, one fourth, um, wait a minute, wait, 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 what did I do? Negative, wrong, right? Because if I put in one, I get negative, put in this, it's going to be negative. Now I put in something smaller than a half, like negative one, which is what I was thinking before. <laughs> that is positive. Okay. Um, so, all right, let's get that going. So it's concave up where this is positive. So negative infinity to negative one half and it's concave down. So you can just use CU and CD. I think your book uses that, it's fine. Concave down from negative a half to zero and zero infinity, okay? It's not defined at zero. The function is not defined at zero. The, fun the function, original function with the second derivative of the function is not defined at zero. So you do not want to like include zero, right? You want to look at these as separate, even though, so uh, that, and so the, all of your, um, all of these guys, intervals of increase and decrease on concavity intervals, they should all be open intervals. Okay, so there's that. We have one point of inflection, right? That's at negative one half. So if I put this in here, f of negative one half, blah. so five times negative one half to the two thirds minus two times negative one half to the five thirds. You know, I'm just gonna put that into a calculator I think and just get the number because it's going to be a little bit easier for me to put it on my graph right so you'll have to okay hold on I'll do this because this calculator is taking me forever um okay so when I evaluate this the number is 3.78 and so the point of inflection is then negative one half and 3.78 so I'm going to use all this information now to draw my curve. I can see if I can fit it down here uh, without erasing these guys because those are helpful. So let's see. One, two, three, four, one, negative, whatever, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so what points do I have already listed here? And my two intercepts. So it goes through this point. Uh, five halves goes through this point. I've got my local min, I already have that. My local max is one, three, so that's here. And then my point of inflection is going to be negative one half and something nearly four, so like around here. Okay, almost four. So what is this going to look like? If I look at my sign chart, I can see around here I'm going to be starting at this point. I'm going to go up here to this maximum and then back down. And that is that is 
consistent with this because this curve is now, of course, uh, concave down. Now, on the left hand side, it's also going to go down like that, right? So essentially, yes, I didn't do a great job of, of drawing that, but essentially, and if you stick in your calculator, you'll see it comes down to this point, and this point is at zero, zero, right? And then it goes up pretty steep because it's got to go through this, this point, which is my inflection point, and it's kind of hard to see because it's going up that steep. You can't necessarily, it's not that easy to see that, but the way I've kind of done it is here, you can see it's kind of curving down, and then there it's kind of curving up. So we have this part, which is um, concave up, this part, which is fairly badly drawn, is concave down, and um, there's your graph.